Hi. Hey, there you Oh, listen to that DJ voice, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a little congestion will do for you, right? <laughs> so true. But, you know, what's so funny about that is I um, I always looked forward to those days when I would have some congestion because I'd get in there and I'd go, K97.5, this yeah, is I, rock. Exactly. Exactly. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do is I want to go and, like, do Barry White karaoke. <laughs> We've got it together, baby. You know, that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I, I love I love him. So those are like my favorite songs. You know? Uh, and, you know, and, and you meet these people and stuff like that where they go, yeah, someone told me I have a great voice for radio. When? When you wake up in the morning or when when do you have a great voice for radio? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so did, did, did you get to see uh, Mac and Rita at home or did you get to see it uh, in a theater? In the theater. Oh, wow. And I did not like it. I'm sorry. What what happened? Well, I, I just didn't want to finish it. I think, here's the thing. It's basically, they're remaking, you know, Freaky Friday. It's a Freaky Friday premise. Okay. And we've seen that redone several times. And when you're going to reimagine something, you have to do it at least as good as, if not better than, the original. And it's got to be worth it. And here, like, I love Diane Keaton. I love this cast, you know, Dustin Milligan, who was Ted on Schitt's Creek. We've got Elizabeth Lale, who I enjoyed on Netflix's You, Simon Rex, so many more great uh, supporting cast members. Um, I just didn't find it believable that this young, gorgeous Elizabeth Lale would want to would be yearning to become this, like, slow quiet like grandma basically yeah, yeah like i just don't think that that's something you yearn for and then when you when you she did the physical comedy like the pilates scene and the rest of it i just was not laughing i was cringing i was mm. like oh this is she's trying so hard and it's just it's not funny like no one <laughs> no one in the room everyone that's just ignoring it would not be ignoring the fact that you're screaming or using the equipment incorrectly like i so the suspension of disbelief never clicked for me but even more than reviewing the film, instead of reviewing Mac and Rita, can we just talk about something else about it? What 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 happened? Diane Keaton. No, I love love love. Yeah, me Diane. too. Me too. But can we talk about the fact that she refuses to work with costume designers? She's wearing the same thing, isn't she? I mean, it's the same look. Like I don't know if they're her clothes or someone else's clothes, but it's always like a beret. Yeah, uh, is the long coats. It's the big poofy skirts. It's the it's a, always the belted like empire waist belted big thick belts. Um, she dresses like Diane Keaton, like that's her own personal style. And so my problem with that is that she does that in every single film. So she never looks like she's playing a character in any film. She just looks like Diane Keaton in every movie. Could right. you imagine if like Nicole Kidman? didn't wear a different wig in every single role she does on TV and yeah. film and different makeup and different clothes and different posture. I mean, like, look at a real actor or even Meryl Streep, like how different she changes. Like, look at Meryl Streep and The Devil Wears Prada versus The Witch and in Into the Woods. Two different people. Or then Mamma Mia, different people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's yeah. like, I don't understand how people cast Diane Keaton and say, you know, are you an actor or are you just playing Diane Keaton and everything? And so this is just, once again, I'm, it really bothers me. I feel like she doesn't serve the character or the story. And I, she's got great style. But if you're not going to be an actor, like the whole point of being an actor is to play a character. Yep, yep, yep. So she has not, I have not her seen, I have not seen her act or play a character in I don't know how many years. Yep, so yep. I, for those reasons, I say skip Mac and Rita. <clears throat> Speaking of Nicole Kidman, have you seen her latest three minute movie? Um, Wait a minute. Not Roar. Which one are you talking about? This is the one right there. When AMC starts their movies, it is Nicole Kidman walking through a theater, inviting people to come back to the movie adventure. It is oh, the yeah, yeah. sexiest. I mean, the sexiest I've ever seen her in the way of her just being, I'm just a normal girl. I just want to come to a theater to watch a movie. Yeah. Wait, is this the one that came out like a year ago? I, I Well, to me, it's brand new if it came out a year yeah. ago. Is it the one where she's like happy or like like heartbreak feels good in a place like this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that came out about a year ago. And she just, the reason I ask is because she did just re um, sign that contract and she's going to be doing another one. Wow. Well, I, I loved it. Boy, boy, it's been that long since I've seen it. Maybe I'm not in theaters, right? When, it, when you know, when the movie right. starts, I, I get in there, you know, after it actually rolls. 
Exactly. And it's so great. I mean, people have been for like the last year have been wearing T-shirts with her and that phrase on it. It's gone kind of viral. It's funny. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right. Back to the movies. What about Day Shift? Yes. What's going on? This is an R-rated Netflix film, uh, direct de- director debut, who, you know, his first film, and he was a stuntman, and it stars Jamie Foxx, who's a good dad slash vampire hunter, <laughs> and, but he's a, he's a dad with something to prove, and it's an action comedy fantasy. Now, I like vampires, but I don't know if I like comedic vampires, because it's almost more like a zombie movie. It's very gross. It's very gory. It's very gratuitous that way. The um, supporting cast, you've got Dave Franco, Snoop Dogg, Carla really? Souza. Carla, um, <clears throat> she's someone like, I don't know her by name, but she's a girl from How to Get Away with Murder mm-hmm. on ABC. And she was the one that, like, that left before the last season, obviously because she wanted to do movies. She's so good in this. She was the highlight of this film for me. Um, but the, while the fight choreography is really good, the vampires aren't scary. I guess they're not supposed to be, even though it's rated R. It's just a bunch of fighting. And I feel like the film was too linear. And it's not fully formed characters oh, or, wow. or story arc. It's just very basic, long, cheesy. And so I, I didn't hate, hate, hate it. So I'm saying it's the kind of movie, if you like to stream something in the background on Netflix while you've got like <laughs> other things doing, you're doing, you know, pay full attention, Day Shift would be a good like background stream. Yeah. Sometimes I just, I just need eye candy. Just something that's going to just, you know, okay, something's on the tube while I do something else. Yeah. Day Shift is great for that. Yeah. That's cool. 13, the musical. I'm not familiar with this. Okay, this is also on Netflix today, rated PG. Now, this is based on a Broadway musical, which I saw the original Broadway really? opening uh, in 2008. And it opened, and I saw the Broadway debut of one, Ariana Grande. Really? Yes, and she co-starred with Elizabeth Gillies from you know TV's Dynasty, and they're like BFFs in real life. Oh, and man. that show was great. I remember being just, I didn't walk away saying, oh my God, it's one of my favorite shows. I need to see it all the time. <clears throat> you know, but I was like, it's great. It's cute. It's great. So when I heard it was being made into a movie, I was excited about it. And then I saw the movie. Uh-oh. And I was like, oh, oh no. Um, basically, here's the premise. It's about a boy, a 13-year-old boy who is having a bar mitzvah. Mm-hmm. He lives in New York City with his parents. They're getting a divorce, and his mom decides before his bar mitzvah to move him to Indiana where they're the only Jewish people. So now he's like in Indiana, and like a bar mitzvah is a big deal. He wants the party to be really special. He goes to school. The songs are all really good. That's the good part. But what's wrong with this thing? Now, you know I love musicals. Mm-hmm. Favorite genre, Okay. But here's the thing. Some people hate musicals. And the reason that people who hate musicals hate musicals is because they think it's really obnoxious that suddenly out of the blue in the middle of a dramatic scene, people just break out into song. Right. And this movie, 13 the Musical, overemphasizes what people hate about musicals hate about musicals so what i'm saying is in every scene when people are talking or whatever and a song's about to start they stop talking they wait for the introductory music to the song to begin they're silent during that time then they turn to the camera break the fourth wall and perform the song to you to the camera then they stop and they go back into it's so unnatural it's so obnoxious it's so not how a a musical should ever be done it's ridiculous i hated it i was almost so here's the thing if you like to hate watch, if you've ever hate watched something or you like to hate watch something, mm-hmm. hate watch 13 the musical. Stream that on Netflix. Oh my God. <laughs> the songs are great. It, it, just, it just doesn't live up to it then. Oh no, it, it was better. The, it, the production value of this is worse than what you see on like a Dis- no. on like high school musical or the Descendants on Disney Channel. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Who, who do you think they're going for? Do you think they're even going to try to get a YA audience? Oh, like well, that's all they can. I mean, it's got to yeah. be like you know the, the the tweens. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Do you really think that we needed a league of their own as a series? Um, I wondered. I I remember back. Remember when the movie first came out? Do you remember the year? Yeah, you do. I I, I remember when it came out. What year? Uh, I want to say. Let's see. I was on Cook Radio, so League of Their Own, maybe nineteen eighty nine. Good. Very close. Ninety two. Okay, ninety two. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So actually, thirty years ago. And it's the same look and feel as the Gina Davis, Tom Hanks, Madonna movie. It feels like it was shot in 1992, but made to look like, you know, the era of the war, the war when they hired women to do a baseball league, a national baseball league. And it's this film, the, ser- the series, rather, it's a TV series on Prime Video. 
<coughs> excuse me, and on Prime Video, this TV series, it's all different characters, so it's not the same character that Gina Davis played or the character that Madonna oh. played or even Tom Hanks. It depicts different characters, but it's the same team. It's still the Rockford Peaches. Yeah. And um, it honors that same time, and it is so good. Right from the very first episode, I watched the first two episodes, and I'm going to continue watching it because it did such a good song of balancing the game and the athleticism and also character and story. Like, I was hooked right, right away. I was invested in and caring about these. So, like, Unlike Day Shift, which didn't fully form characters, it was just very basic. Mm -hmm. A League of Their Own, the story is complicated in the best way. Like you're like all twisted up within the drama of these women and how they're being disrespected as people, but also not being taken seriously as athletes. And they just want to be good athletes, but because they're women, they're not treated that way at that time. You know, it's so good. I was really enjoying it, and also kudos to this design team for getting it to look exactly like the movie. I'm, I'm so glad that Hollywood is understanding that binge watching is really our walk in life now. It's not even a way of life. It's, it's our walk because my wife and I have binge watching hours. Okay, we'll get together at a certain time. This is our binge watch. This is what we're going to do and all that kind of stuff. And, yeah. and, and these guys continue to feed that. It's so true. And like, I did not review like the TV show Uncoupled on Netflix, but loved it, binged it. I did not review The Sandman on Netflix, but loving it, binging it. Yep. You know, I, re I reviewed season one of How to Get Away with Murder, but like, I'm like loving, not How to Get Away with Murder, Only Murders in the Building. Oh, I Google. love that show. I love that show. I mean, every time Martin Short grunts, I'm yeah. like, why are you the funniest person that was ever born? And that's everything about it. It's like, it's so fun. It's so, I keep thinking, I know who did it. No, yeah. it's, it's so true. You sit there and, and you talk back and forth or you text somebody going, I, I figured it out. I figured it out. And then there's no yeah. there's no way you figured it out. No, no, because they're <laughs> smart. They're smart. They're very <laughs> So what's going on on RyanJReviews.com? Well, today I'll be announcing a movie club. So if you are local to where I am in the Milwaukee, Wisconsin area, you will be able to join me at an advanced screening next Tuesday, All right. August 16th for the movie Beast. Oh, I've heard about this movie. I've heard a lot yeah, about it. Yeah, it could be cool. You know what movie I've heard about that I'm excited for? The Invitation. I'm not familiar with that one. That's the one where, like, a cousin visits her, like, other cousin in Europe, and, like, he kind of kidnaps her and makes him makes her his vampire wife or something. Oh, really? Like, yeah, it looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> so there, there's, there's hope on the horizon. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, outside of that, you feeling good, though? Feeling better? Hanging in there. Hanging in there. That's, you know? that's the way to... Yeah, I'll tell you the one thing that I learned that I wish somebody would have spoke about while getting COVID. Nobody uh, ever talked about how time slows down so much. That, oh, so cool. I, oh, my God. I, didn't, I, 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 thought, <laughs> I thought it took three lifetimes to get from 1 o'clock to one fifteen. I know. Oh, my God. I totally get what you mean. And, yeah. And thank God I, for TV. Thank God for TV and, and, for, <laughs> and for Instacart. So I don't have to like go to the grocery store. I just have them deliver stuff and, you know, but I just feel bad for Toto because like we're missing her canine center today. Yeah. And I know she wants to run around. And I'm like, I don't feel up to it, you know, but she's she's a trooper. So oh, that's like Jazzy in the background all the time. <laughs> I'm going, Jazzy, I swear I, I, I'm, I, I'll get better. I'll get better. I know, I know. I just don't want her. Sick. You know, the she sneezes. I'm like, oh shoot, is she okay? <laughs> you know, <clears throat> yeah. Oh anyway, my. thanks, so, Arrow. Well, you keep in touch, all right, man, and you get better, all right. I will. Thank you so much. You know, I love you. Love you too.